uh, Dunkirk. Now, here's the thing. I know you saw it, um, uh, but I want... Oh, go ahead. Jason Sklar, ladies and gentlemen. Godspeed. 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 Um, Thank you, Jason. So, I've never seen... You guys not together? This is weird for me. No, it's yes. all good. It's, it's, uh, <laughs> just, just get rid of that weight. Ooh, <laughs> you feel so great. better. I feel great. I lo- you lost like an appendage. I'm Lucy Goosey. You're going to yeah. see me in ways that I've, you've never seen me before. <laughs> I know. Aaron's got to adjust the camera. This is crazy. I know. Um, Thanks, Aaron. Um, but now, because I really want to hear what you think of this movie to see if your um, opinion lines up with CJ's, because CJ has a written review of the site um, on the site right now. It was... Let me say this. Let me address some of the criticism I've heard about this movie. Okay, first. and it might be from CJ, but go ahead. I haven't read <laughs> CJ's review. Okay. Uh, I heard this because I was down at Comic Con and heard some people talk about this at Comic Con. Mm. And were they cosplaying in Dunkirk uniforms? <laughs> no, no, they were. It was. It was like uh, I was on Douglas Movies with Andy Signore from Screen right, Junkies, right. and so mm-hmm. he obviously was talking a lot mm-hmm. about what some people have said. Is like, oh, you know. There's not a lot of talking, and it's, you know, there's not a lot of character development, and, you know, it's decent. Well, and there I, isn't in war. No, and <laughs> that's the thing. Talking. So, exactly. It's movies real straightforward, man. If they're surrounded by the Germans. Right, right. You're going to die. From the British perspective. From the British perspective. You it's need to it's get a the, rescue mission. The movie is a rescue mission. You got to get the right? fuck off the island. That's right. Or the, not the island, or but, just the, but out of the area. Out of the area. You got to get back to England. To the island. I mean, to the, the island. So they, and correct me if I'm wrong, they get Wonder Woman to just run across she comes and in. she takes the bullets <laughs> on and her then invisible jet. on her thing and just zips away and like <laughs> destroys everybody and then Chris they move Pine forward. Chris Pine is okay, fantastic. Good. He's an American. Good. So an American Good. saves them. Great. No, but this movie is, I thought it was fantastic. And knowing those criticisms, I was like, Wow, these whoever said that missed the whole point of this because it Nolan did a fantastic job of boiling this down to just raw survival. Were you were you riveted the whole time? Yes. The thing I will say, the opening, we talked about this having watched the trailer, you know, we were talking about because because the the opening battle scene in, in Saving Private Ryan was very groundbreaking when that came yeah. out almost twenty years ago. Right. Now, is this the Christopher Nolan movie we need or deserve? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Depends from both. My perspective. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so the opening the the, the 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 some of the battle footage is amazing. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of aerial fighting because you're seeing them the uh, dog fights the dog fights in the air with Tom Hardy, and then you're seeing stuff in the sea, and then there's one on one trying to th- a lot of it's at sea a lot of them are trying to mm-hmm. get on and off boats and mm-hmm. and the british navy can't come rescue them because it's too shallow and they don't want to lose boats for the next battle so they then send this is the, what actually happened is then they put out the call and just civilians got on their boats from england came over the english channel and rescued a bunch of people so it was civilian boats yeah it's, they, it's civilian wow. boats but there's also there's i mean it's it's the, here's what i'll say it's like the opening battle of the D-Day battle of Saving Private Ryan, but for two hours. It's that intense. Wow. I left wow. Was like it that graphic too. Uh, yeah, I mean it's and it was. How about the comedy in there? Was it was there? hilarious. <laughs> okay. Good to know. Good to Tom know. Tom Hardy was like, "Take control, Dunkirk." <laughs> um, it was. It was. It was gripping, and it, it was really disturbing. Like when you talk about that opening sequence of Saving Private Ryan, it, it was. It was really disturbing. I mean, it, it sh- tried to show war as they're like, as this realism. is exactly, yeah. you know, we're not glamorizing this, and it, this is how gratuitous, we're gonna make it, you, gratuitous it actually is. Yeah, we're going to make you feel like you're on that beach. Well, Graham, you have been to Afghanistan, you've been to Iraq, you uh, have been to uh, Detroit. I mean, you've been to all <laughs> the war-torn areas of our world. Columbus, Ohio. Yeah, Columbus, uh, Ohio. But uh, you have been amongst soldiers, and I think there is this idea of just get me off the island and well, that's, just survival that I think a lot of people don't fully understand. And that's what I loved about this movie, too, is so often, and obviously the sort of John Wayne-ish World War II movies, but up to today, you know, Soldiers are depicted often as, you know, super heroic and stuff. And not that they're not. This isn't a slam on them. But too, more often than not, they take out the just raw human fear that happens. In this yeah. movie, you had some young guys that were like, I just want to get the fuck 
out of here. Mm-hmm. And well, he deliberately uh, cast unknowns for the soldiers wow. for that very reason. He's That's... like, you know, it's because they're young and unknown. I want them to be young and unknown actors. He wow. did such a great job of just showing the sort of faceless young masses that had to, especially World War II. So you right. had millions of people mm-hmm. on all sides fighting. And most of them were just 19, 20, 21 year old kids who were like, guess what? There's a big war, you're in. Mm. And whether you, you want to or not. Whether you want to or not. And you know, you this is this is pre like Vietnam and stuff like that where like protesting People have, just so you know, people have protested every single war that's ever happened and said there's always been pe- people protested World War II and said, why are we killing? War is awful. Mm-hmm. So, but this like wholesale cultural, I don't want to go to war didn't really exist. And this pe- this film takes place in a period before the U.S. got into World War II, mm-hmm. right? So, and it's... Um, it's and so the movie's told from three points of view. It's on the beach with the infantry evacuated by the navy, and then in the air. And right. and and here's the other thing too, Tom. You know, he casts all these no names, so there's just these masses of kids. Right. The opening battle scene is this kid just in this harrowing, and he and and I saw it in IMAX at the Chinese theater. Nice. Oh wow. So to because I just pronounce the Oriental theater. It's, <laughs> it's the Sorry. Asian American theater. <laughs> um, and so was it 3D? No, no, no. I don't think that this movie isn't out in 3D. But I would recommend mm-hmm. seeing it mm-hmm. on the big screen. And I, right, if you can see it in IMAX, I would, mm-hmm. because Christopher Nolan's film work and his shot composition is amazing. And the battle, he makes it loud. Are you amazed that okay, this is a story told from the British perspective before? the U.S. got into this war. Obviously, it's a war that we got into. Are you surprised, either of you, both of you guys, how well that movie is doing? Or do you think it's not doing well, but just that there'd be interest on the U.S. side? I mean, we're now in a heavy period of isolationism where it's like, we don't give a shit about what's going on with you, Mm -hmm. but that this is... Well, I think Christopher Nolan's name is something that has also helped driving the film Mm -hmm. because he, you know, his films have been very well received and he's got fans as director where I think it, and I myself included I'll see whatever he makes yeah you're like, like what is this is the, yeah. this is a Christopher Nolan film right, this right. is his interpretation of these events I want to see it regardless I of what see the his subject perspective. matter yep. the teaser mm-hmm. trailer that came out last fall mm-hmm. the 60 second teaser trailer Christopher Nolan Dunkirk the teaser trailer I was like I'm in I don't need to yeah. see I don't need to see anything more yeah and I think a lot of people are that it's, way you know he had a hundred million dollar budget uh, it's done over 50 he million he made a hundred worldwide just in the first weekend. And yeah. when you see those trailers too, his name comes up first. Yeah. You know, so, so Well, you know. it's so funny because in the in the promotion of it, in the lead up, I've seen a lot of face interviews of him and you know what I mean? Like he's as as important of a piece in this thing as anybody else. He's the reason to right. see it because not to take anything away from Tom Hardy, Tom Hardy he's is got in, like ten lines in the movie. Something he's like in a that. face. He's, you know, they have those air masks. Yeah, he's a. You barely see his face through the he whole. He basically took the mask from uh, Mad Max. Yeah, from Mad Max. From Mad Max. <laughs> just no teeth on the outside yeah. of it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's he's like go. he only performs in masks from now on. And he'll only mm-hmm. do like if you added up all the lines in both of those movies that he has, <laughs> it's like enough for like one scene, like one uh, scene in Juno. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, yeah, that's the thing, and and that's um, that's what sh- w- was so, and that it is it is Nolan. You are going to see Christopher Nolan, mm-hmm. and some really gifted young actors, right? Um, who should be getting more work from this point? Now, forward. how do you feel about that criticism specifically? Like, because CJ had that criticism in his review as well, where. The um, the actual soldiers felt interchangeable. They weren't developed enough as characters. Like now, how did you feel about that when you were watching? I, I, with the all movie? due respect to C.J. Johnson, whom I love, and I I think he just missed it. Okay. I, I and I, mm-hmm. it's not. It, this isn't me. Like I'm right, you're wrong. I really think. Let me ask you this, not to bring another war movie in, but the most recent Star Wars movie, where. It was basically, they said, oh, let's take the one line from the original Star Wars Mm -hmm. uh, of a lot of people died in order for you to get this message and made a whole movie about that. So all these characters coming up that aren't some of them not really developed at all. And you're like, why should I care? 
So that because I had that feeling really in that one. Mm-hmm. I did not connect with that movie. I understand it. I understand where it fits in it. I'm mm-hmm. I get that, but I was like, man, why should I give a shit about these people? I mm-hmm. I see that with Rogue One. Mm-hmm. I think this is separate, and and here's why is because no lightsabers. Yeah, there's no <laughs> lightsabers, but like this really happened. Mm-hmm. So I have yet, me personally, I haven't seen, I've known about this historically, Dunkirk, mm-hmm. but I haven't seen the telling of this story. Right. And also, for me, Christopher Nolan said, I want to show you what war is. And like, if we had flashbacks to him growing up, or we learned his character, or his mom, or, oh, he's got to get back to his young girlfriend, that's all... It's all understood. Like I would, that would have, I would have been like, oh man, why are we wasting time yeah. with this? Because yeah. it's real boiled down. You got to get home, and back home, everyone's got their own specific what you need. But what's back home? Kids, mm-hmm. wife, mm-hmm. mom, whatever. Right. But just get back home. This is this is terrifying. This is real war. This is what happened. This was the whole world was at war. Did you hate the Germans? <laughs> like what were your like? Did you did you develop a sense of anger towards the other side? Did it, no, I did mean it... Hitler got him out of the depression. I think he did some good work. So yeah. I feel uh, anybody... I'm saying like were you? I mean, did they build up, build them more or less again, than what they were? Uh, again, this is, to me is a testament to Nolan. Now maybe you might just say I need more out of my movies, so what didn't do enough for me? But to mm-hmm. me, the testament of Nolan was. The Germans were just over there. Yeah, right. The bullets would come. Planes would come from the sky. We didn't meet the Germans. We didn't see their were faces. Were there any wow. scenes of somebody going, papers, please? No, there was no. none of that. There was no, you never <laughs> saw any of the Germans. It's also in, like, um, Letters from Iwo Jima, um, and how, you know, Clint Eastwood just showed the Japanese military and the Americans we barely saw or knew anything about them. It was really from, if you're a soldier on that beach at Dunkirk, you're not meeting any Germans. The, right. You know they're coming. The, the planes would come from above and you'd hear that, mm, and you'd just be fucking, that sound was terrifying. Yeah. So he really, Nolan just put you, you were in the place with them of, of, the, of right. the British soldiers. The way Spielberg did. Yes. Mm-hmm. And so you didn't, there was, so this will draw a ton of Saving Private Ryan comparisons, comparisons or right. like this is the that for this generation. You're going to hear that a lot. I think so. And and not a bad thing. I mean, that movie thing. was I mean, I, a, a movie that I feel like there aren't a lot of people walking mm-hmm. around going, didn't like it. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, I think it's what nothing it, what I expected. What, yeah. But what it might do, though, is people might go, yeah, but in, you know, in in in. Saving Private Line, Ryan, we got to meet everybody, we got to know about him, Tom Hanks was the teacher, and all those scenes are great. Well, it's a different type of movie. It's a different too. type of movie. And this was like... So it's, to me, it seems like Saving Private Ryan more about war in gen- depicting it through this thing, and this is more about this battle and this moment, and we're right. going to depict this moment. We are... Saving Private Ryan was like, this is what the people who have to go to war have to then go through on yeah. the battlefield. This is the story of these specific right. soldiers. And, this and these and these, this these, moment. these specific mm-hmm. soldiers are caricatures of the American GIs that fought in this war. Right. So you got to kind of see how that war, you know, was a different era. Like that scene when Tom Hanks, is, uh, everybody asked, well, what did you do before the war? I was a teacher. Yeah. yeah. You know, and yeah. they have those discussions. And every man I you? kill makes me feel like I'm further from home. Right. right. You know? And so there's lines like that. This is just the raw fear, survival. I mean, on the movie poster. It felt like scorched earth the entire time you were there. It's fucking. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. On the movie poster, it says survival is victory. And you see guys do selfish, scared things. You see them crack a little bit. Mm. And that's like because. That happened. That's yeah. what that's what went down. Everybody wasn't like, we gotta go fight the Jerry's. Guys were like, this is fuck. I want to get the fuck out of here. It's like guys throwing up before the on the, uh, before the beach and uh, and and having read a lot of history um, about World War II, when I read like serious historians, they talk about. I mean. <laughs> There were guys like trying to get out of it. There were guys oh, yeah. trying who were like and faking if, getting injured to get the fuck out of there. Everyone wasn't just fucking John Wayne charging up the hill. I no, mean, and even if you were, you came back a different person. Yeah, you came back right. changed. Our our great uncle was a fighter pilot mm-hmm. in World War II, and he he 
cracked up. I mean, and when he came back, he like literally had a, had a mental breakdown. Well, they didn't. They didn't call. It, they didn't know what it was. They didn't call it PTSD. No. One, one guy is reacting a certain way in the movie, and Mark Rylance, who also was, he's the only other name actor. Yeah, mm-hmm. but he's one of the civilians, so it's, it's it's sort of. Yeah, it's Kenneth Branagh, Tom Hardy, and Mark Rylance. That's it. That's right? it. And, and Kenneth, Kenneth Branagh was playing Woody Allen. Yeah, I think that's was, unbelievable. And he was like, um, uh, uh, there's humans over there. I feel uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the Nuremberg trials. <laughs> it's like, what I. Germans over there, <laughs> but it was well cast. Kenneth Branagh plays a an English military officer, so you should have a well known English A list actor totally. playing that, and then a bunch of faceless kids. Totally, really. So Keanu Reeves could have. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Keanu Reeves. <laughs> um, Keanu Reeves. So yeah, it was it was really it's a really fantastic film, and I highly so recommend it. And it. and C J, I think you just missed it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Good. Hey, I like it when people disagree. To me, that's yeah. awesome. That's that's why people go to the site. A lot of times, we have different uh, opinions and reviews on on the website, which is great. It's, I think it's a Nolan masterpiece, quite honestly. Really? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. All right. Good enough. I shot first. With a